incredible win. UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer. They have Texas this weekend coming off the win against Army. That opening game, the uh, uh, numerous overtimes against Houston, joins us live. Have you ever been through like the first couple of weeks like you've seen as at this year with UTSA in your coaching career? Yes, sir. 2001, uh, we opened up our season. Uh, we lost to Gladewater in multiple overtimes, which is the last time Gilmer lost to Gladewater in 2001. And then 2002, the very next week, came back and played hook, um, double or triple overtime, and won that game. So the exact – I told my staff that, and uh, my brother Kurt, like right when we missed the field goal going to overtime, he's like, bro, you've got to quit speaking crap into existence. This is terrible. So, yeah, we've been through it before. <laughs> Coach, have you told the team it's okay to win it? In regulation, or do they just like playing that much? Well, if they can get me in overtime three weeks in a row, we'll be glad to sign up for that right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I love having you on the show. It's great to hear your voice and also your your sense of humor as well. well Jeff, I appreciate that. I didn't have much of one at that Houston game. But I'm doing a little better this week. No, I, and, and that was a miraculous stuff. Uh, just a great game to watch. Now, you're playing Texas. You used to coach there. You know what they've done. And, in fact, what we saw against Alabama. How do you approach this week? Well, I was a lot more optimistic until I watched that game. Um, <laughs> you know, I think they outplayed them. I mean, it, they, they physically controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Uh, I think their running backs are better than Alabama's back. Uh, I, I think Bijan. It's as good a back as there is in the country. I think Roshan's is as good of a two back there is in the country for sure. And uh, man, it was it was electric, and uh, they looked the real deal. And uh, we're going to really struggle with their size and their girth on both sides of the ball. Coach, uh, obviously they had a you know injury there at quarterback. It's been secretive as far as you know what the actual diagnosis is on Quinn Ewers. How do you as a coach prepare for uncertainties like that? Do you just prepare full meal deal and expect that. Everybody will be available, and if they're not, great. How do you kind of do that as, as a coach? You just do your best to put yourself in his position. You know, obviously, I don't have any intel of what's going on with those kids, but yeah. I, I can watch the video, and I can make my own assessment of what I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do your best. Try to guess what he might do. I mean, you know, Roshan's a quarterback in high school. They, they've shown multiple games. They were in Wildcat with him back there, 15 to 20 snaps. So I would imagine that'd be part of the plan. Those other two guys couldn't go. And if, if, if one of those other two guys didn't go, I imagine that'll be still a small part of the plan. And they'll, they'll mix in with those guys can do well with their health issues. So you're just trying to anticipate uh, what he's going to do and prepare the best you can. Is there uh, an obvious difference? You, you, you have played straight up with who you have with Houston and now UTSA. You've played against other people before. Is there an obvious difference when you look at Texas compared to other teams you've played since you've been at UTSA? Uh, yeah, it was just – you could tell they've done a really good job recruiting. I mean, you know, you look at their offensive line. Of course, we all know what Kelvin Banks is going to be, 6'6", 300 pounds, and Hayden Connor, those kids from Katy. And, you know, those are just big, big, big humans. You know, Christian Jones, 6'6", 315, and, I've always been impressed with Bijan and Roshan. I've known, and I just know all these kids so well. You know, Jaren's from Lufkin, Thompson, and DeMarvin Hahn, Overshaw from Art. I just have a lot of, you know, Ojemo from Katie, Coburn from Westville. You know, it just, I know all those kids. I've been around them for a long time. I just know how talented they are. And, uh, but my kids are excited. Uh, they really are. I like my team. Uh, we're, we're battle tested. We play two really good football teams. We're beat up real bad, obviously, as anybody would be if they played Houston Army back-to-back. -back. But I still like my kids. I like how they compete. And uh, I'm excited to watch them play Saturday. Coach, how much does your team's gumption, the, their ability to not let, you know, bad things get in their way and, you know, have to play and, and keep in these games, forcing overtime two weeks in a row, have to do with the fact that you will have a lot of seniors and juniors and upperclassmen and guys who have been through things on your roster? We've been blessed. You know, it's our third season together, and we, we haven't had anybody hit the portal. They've all ridden in here with me and uh, stayed in there with me. And uh, I'm really proud of them. We don't we don't have crazy NIL money. We've got good NIL money, but we don't have crazy NIL money. They could have gotten more. They could have gotten in the portal and, and gotten more. But, man, they they stayed in here with me. They're ride-or-die guys. I love coaching them. 
I can't wait to watch them play Saturday. And I know we're going against a great opponent, and I know we're a double-digit dog, and it's a tough environment. But, man, I'm excited for my kids to have this opportunity. Coach, uh, what was the, the thought process behind this three-game stretch to open the season? I think just a wildly different set of, of preparations going from, you know, Holgerson and the Cougars to obviously what Army does that's so unique and, and uh, being on the road and then going on the road and, and, and what uh, UT does, just kind of the process of, of the program having this incredible start schedule-wise. Well, first, I used to make jokes because I was the AD and the head football coach of the high school coach. I'd make jokes then we had those killer schedules that the AD was trying to get me fired because <laughs> I was both, right? Well, now I'm not both. So if I wouldn't have known she signed me to a 10-year contract, I would have thought she's trying to get me fired uh, with these first three games. Uh, they're all uniquely different. They're all very physical. They're all very good teams. And uh, I'm, the, the high school coach in me looks at this like non-conference, you know, non-district. Mm -hmm. And it, I know it's going to prepare us. You always want to play, you know, Scott Surratt, mm -hmm. John King, and those kind of guys in non-district, so you're ready for district. Because I learned that when I first started, David can vouch for, we tried to schedule as many cupcakes as possible. So we just wanted to win some ball games and get a little false hope for our kids. Right, yeah. But the more you got in those playoffs deep into them, you weren't ready because you hadn't played anybody worth a hoot. Well, we're, we're battle-tested. Can we come out of this thing? Health is going to be the key. Your quarterback was special, but he's always special. With Frank Harris, he won the Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award for this week for the performance against Army, but he could probably do that almost every week. How extra special did you see him on Saturday? Man, you just, I talked to my team about it. I told y'all about it. When you have those kind of guys, man, you better enjoy them. Don't take them for granted, man. They're a blessing. I've had a few of those in my career. You don't get to sit in these chairs unless you've had a few of those kind of guys, and we're just grateful to have them. You know, the second night team, they pressured us. He came out of it, made two guys miss, and he jumped three of them for a first down. And, of course, your, your heart goes up in your throat when you see him jump up in the air with three people. Uh, but when he landed and got back up, man, our sideline was really into the game. They love Frank Harris, as we all do. Jeff, you uh, have you ever – and I'm not suggesting because of who you're playing, because we just saw what Appalachian State, Marshall, and Georgia Southern did – this past weekend, have you ever entered a game as a coach in high school or college where you didn't think you could win a game? Yeah, my first year at Gilmer, you know, we were about to play Dangerfield, and it was forty-nine nothing at halftime. <laughs> uh, then the next, we were losing, by the way. Uh, <laughs> then the next week, we were playing Spring Hill, and it was twenty-eight to nothing. Then the first quarter, we were losing again, and I remember saying to my coaches, "Man, twenty-eight times." four that's 112 <laughs> these guys can score 112 points on me they're gonna fire me my very first year uh so yeah we, i'd be lying if i told you that wasn't we weren't ready back then um but it's been a long time i would think that's the last time i ever had that thought was probably 2000 how much do you think what those teams did this past weekend helps just college football in general so much talk about the big conferences, the money, and all of that. But then those three just went into three classic tradition-type schools and won straight up. Well, I know I'm just a high school football coach, so no one's going to listen to me, right? But if there's anything I wish the media could do for a, just a good old country boy asking for a favor, I wish we'd stop using the term G5 and Power 5. I don't think anybody would ever know the difference if we'd all just quit talking about it. I mean, those are good programs. App State plays good football. I mean, Marshall plays really good football. So, uh, it, and it's so good for the game. It's just good for the game when we have those upsets. And, uh, and I thought it was good for the game last weekend, and it got everybody excited. I'm so excited about the rule change of, you know, we're going to take 12 to the playoffs now. And if you win your conference, those top, those top six, you know, conference teams, those guys are going to get in there. That, that's exciting, man. I'm recruiting at UTSA now, and I can tell them recruits, you come here, not that we're – Ready to win the AAC yet? I'm not saying that. But if we were to win that league, you know, we, we're going to the playoffs. That, that's pretty special. So from college football falling apart to now, like, I mean, a switch has been flipped in, in the best kind of way, hasn't it, for, for schools all outside of the, you know, the I guess the talking points that you just said, the power five or whatever. I mean, we, we months ago, college football's falling apart, and now here we are, and I, I, it's better than ever for a program like UTSA. Would you agree with that? Well, yeah, because let's just put on our recruiting caps real quick. Do you, do you want to go to the University of Texas and sit on the bench and wait on all those five stars? 
And you can go to the National Football League right here from San Antonio. Spencer Burford starting left guard for the 49ers. Treat Woolen starting the corner for the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, hey, by the way, you can also play for a national championship. Yeah. You can compete in a 12-team playoff if you win your league. I mean, that is just so exciting for kids. It's better for all of us. It's better yeah. for media. It's better for boosters. It's better for presidents. It's better for coaches. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. And uh, I'm really excited that some of those teams did that last week to get everybody talking about this very conversation you're asking me about. Well, and you, I know if anyone believes exactly what you said is you, and, and it's good, and I love it. I love the way uh, so much was spent time on, time spent on on the, the super, super, super this and that, and yet, man, that's why we play the game. That's why we watch and cover the game. And, Jeff, good luck Saturday in Austin. Thank you so much for the access you give us. Brother, whenever David Smoke needs anything, it's going to get done. I can promise you that. Appreciate your friendship. God bless and birds up. Thank you, buddy. Birds up. That's Jeff Trailer, UTSA football coach. I love everything he said. 